G'day, welcome to Project Brewpeg. My name's Damien. We're converting a sunken fishing trawler into a global expedition and research boat. We're community funded and you can get on board. Last week you saw us in the preparation stage of setting up our red arc gauges. This week we're getting the final sensors in and we're getting the gauges up and running. Thanks to our sponsor, Red Arc. Cheers. Alright, so now that we've got the turbo crossover pipe off, that comes off the intercooler which sits on that side of the engine. If you come over here to the turbo, I've managed to crack it off the exhaust manifold. So what we can do now is, you can see that's the inlet of the turbo there. We just need to put something over that to protect it from getting any garbage inside. And then we can start going to town on these studs. Have a look at this bad boy. It's pretty screwed. So basically what's going on is it looks like that turbo is possibly been loose and jiggling around or something like that or some sort of garbage has got in there that's allowed the exhaust to maybe blow out to the stud and start eating it out or something I don't know it doesn't really matter those studs are getting a bit rooted so what I'm going to do is put them on the replace list I'm going to pull them out of that manifold which is probably opening a can of worms but on my light, nice to do list is pull those studs out replace them and replace the exhaust gasket at the same time just to see if I can stop whatever is causing them from doing that. So we're going to put the engine on hold for the second. Um, we're not going to be able to get rid of those studs or deal with those bungs today. It's a Sunday, so nothing's open. So we're going to have to look at that tomorrow um, when we're able to get some supplies. We need to do a 1 8 NTP uh, drill and tap. Um, what, we're, what we're planning on doing basically is drilling down the guts of that bung and actually tapping it out because we need to go to a smaller size regardless for the new sensor that we're putting in. So we're going to use that as our adapter. Um, it's a steel adapter, but it's a steel bung, so we'll be able to drill and tap into steel, so we should be able to get a nice, beautiful thread. Um, we're, we're not gonna get that out of the cast iron unless we do something dramatic, and then either, either way, we've still gotta go and put another bit of steel back in. So um, our plan at this stage is actually to modify that bung and use it as our adapter. So uh, Rich is doing the um, DC control wiring, So, and I'm doing the AC wiring. Um, yeah. So this is our, this is our Blue Seas fu fuse box thing that we're using. Um, not for any particular brand, it's just that it's a decent brand that has a good layer. Um, Positives all feed in through the bottom, and then you have negatives feeding in through these ones up the top here, um, and then all of the positives are fused, so you can have a decent stack, like you can have 12 positives coming out and 12 negatives coming out, so it's a decent sort of sized fuse box for a fairly compact layer. Mm. Um, and then we put it in an hour meter for the engine. So we've got our three gauges over the back here, the, the red arc gauges with fuses where needed and so on. We've got our main sort of power, this, this big orange cabling that does the main power to the starter motor. And then, so main kill switch, um, uh, engine powering up the engine, and then a, a engine start button. Um, so we're just sort of like tidying everything up, putting on like waterproof connectors, um, just so that there's no no chance of water getting in, or the least chance as possible. And then all of this will be sprayed. Once we've done all of that, it'll be sprayed so that we can try and stop the actual terminals themselves from going going cactus with um, with the salt water. Uh, and we made this little panel as well to, to obviously enclose it so we can't kick our wires and do anything stupid. Yeah. Wow. So it's just it's a amazing. long, slow process of Look just at, oh, tidying. Oh, <laughs> Jess oh, just <laughs> slid down the floor and crashed into the door. <laughs> Good. <laughs> yeah, <my 
you find out where the sharp objects are. They slide around the boat. Look at these poor guys have it. Um, it's um. <coughs> oh, now I was sitting doing this. Yeah. Oh, it looks amazing. And the floorboards are perfectly designed so when, it, when you drop something, it disappears like yeah, right down. <laughs> miles away. Yeah, to the abyss. So, carrying on with the wiring, the AC is now strapped up nice and tight all the way around our cable trays. These cable trays are the, um, there's 150mm, uh, 100mm and 75mm widths. And we actually just use um, a really strong sealant adhesive to hold these on to alloy blocks, which is themselves held onto the steel. Uh, and it saves a huge amount of time and gives a bit of vibration proofing if we do it that way. So, things are going back together. The last little bit that we have to solve is this box down here, that controls our exhaust gas temp and uh, our boost gauge. Now what we need to do is, we need to bring the loom, so if I pull this up, that there's the loom that plugs in for that gauge. Now that's all fine, and we've put liquid electrical tape on all of these uh, um, wires going into this connector, but we're not 100% sure that that's gonna be good enough for um, all the condensation and temperature and all that sort of stuff that we're gonna encounter in here. So what our plan is, is to mount that inside a waterproof box of some sort. Exactly what that's gonna look like, we're not 100% sure yet, um, but we're going to attempt to build an IP300 box Okay, so this is going to become our waterproof junction box. So what we're going to do, we're going to seal up each end. We're going to, it's just a piece of 100 by 50 um, alloy box, probably 3 mil wall, something like that. Um, we're going to seal the ends off. We're going to basically cut this hole in the top. Um, so we'll drill a hole to get a router in, and then we'll basically buzz a router down along a wood router all the way around this and that'll give us a nice radius edge it'll also give us a beautiful cut um, really easy way to um, make a real nice job of aluminium is to use a router a wood router um, so we'll do that and then our cables are basically going to come in and out of each end and then everything in here is going to be um, the lid will be sickered back down so it'll be a nice watertight box and it'll be a great place to have our electrics and have very little um, issue in terms of water getting into the connections We had a massive tool t clean up um, about, I don't know, a week ago. Call it the great clean up of 2019, and we can't find any of our bits. So we're not routering this today, we're skill sawing it. Last job for the day is engine bay. We are going to mount the boxes that we've, or the box that we've just created. We're gonna mount it under the floorboards where all of our connections sit. As we don't have an alloy welder, we are using our um, adhesive sicker, sicker stuff that we use. Um, this stuff is pretty awesome at holding these bits of alloy together. 
you could literally pull on these like with your body weight and they wouldn't come apart it's pretty amazing so we're using it as a watertight sealant and then bonding bonding each end together like that And that's just this bit just gets uh, thrown on the ground, and that's our assembly. <laughs> it's going to slide down the hull. <laughs> Let's get some tape on that. So the plan is we've taped this down now. It's you can sort of see underneath there. It's glued to the bottom of the boat. Um, that'll be dry by the morning, and then we can start uh, fitting our our lid and also all the wiring that goes on the inside of it. So it's morning time, and this is the box that we created uh, yesterday. So what we've got is a boost vacuum and positive pressure line, as well as, what's the specific words for that, the wire for the EGT? What's that wiring called? Alumel and chrome mill wire. That stuff. So that's coming in, you can see that's the silver line that goes to that yellow color there, and then sort of heads up to that green plug in the back of this box. So this box, comes from Red Arc and that um, links those two inputs into electronic and then heads it up to the um, up to the dash and also up to our gauges just over here by the battery. Um, what we're doing is you can sort of see over there there's a bunch of wires coiled up. They're not used, they're spears, redundancy, and then everything else is getting joined with these heat shrink style marine connectors so that we can make sure that we keep everything out watertight. Now that box itself is also watertight and the lid gets sickered on so if we ever need to take it off we're going to have to cut it off but theoretically we shouldn't really see any um, moisture inside that box and we'll probably also chuck some of that silicon or silica or whatever you call it to evaporate out any water and then put it into the silica itself. So at the top of the engine here we've got a empty water fitting so we're going to be putting our sender unit in which is this little doodad right here so it's basically actually let me take it out so I can show you it so it's that that's our water sender goes in this adapter like so obviously with a bit of sealant and then that goes in the engine and that is what the water sees now this is the stuff we're using what is it it's a basically a high pressure sealant it's like think of it like thread tape but it's a it's a gel type goo and it sets sort of pretty hard it's um yeah it's pretty good and the reason we use this rather than a tape is because nothing can come loose and start floating through the engine when you're using a gel like this and finally this piece of alloy here is our um, turbo crossover pipes so it goes from the turbo at that end and then over to the intercooler at that end this is where our boost is measured so I come right down you can see this little fitting here we're going to pull that out and we're going to tap that hole slightly bigger. We're going to go one quarter NTP, um, and that's going to allow us to put in a hose barb and start running our boost gauge from that fitting there. So Rich just gave me the word that we are just about ready to power this up. So we're just going through and tidying it up, doing all of the last checks and so on. I'm going to go through get these sensors in the engine and we can start seeing if we can get some readings. So I need to fit this engine temperature sender into this area of the engine. This is theoretically the hottest part of the cooling system. So we use this um, high pressure goo, it's a thread sealant. So I'm going to mash it into the threads really well, all the way around like that. and then. Ideally, you want to do it on the female side of the thread also. You don't want to put too much in. You don't want it to, um, you know, gum up and float through your system. That said, you don't have to be too careful with this stuff. It's better than tape in the sense that it's not going to float around your engine forever. It will, you know, bind up. Right, so nice even coat all the way around. You want to put it in within a, in a few minutes of putting this stuff on. It does set, so time is of the essence. Okay, 
it's pretty good. Happy with that. Right, let's get this. I have a, a sensor here, which has just been using this one to line the cabling up. So this is the same deal, just you want to have your goo nice evenly all the way around. In the threads, no gaps. I'm not going to be able to get it into this one very easily, so we'll give it a shot, but no promises on that one. It's in there, it's not pretty, but it will work. Give that a clean off so my OCD will survive. So we're going to clean this up, mount it properly. This is just obviously sitting there for now to figure out where stuff goes. But Brewpeg does have multiple temperature senders. So we've got one on the top of the engine here where it's hottest. We're also going to be putting one on the keel cooling pipes where it's just coming out of the pipes and going into the engine. So it monitors the coldest part of the cooling system. I'm curious to know what that difference is going to be when we go into the ice and also when we go into the tropics because it's going to tell us how effective our cooling system is operating. So that's why we're using this particular gauge because it has dual temperature senders. Okay, so one of the things that we need to do is take this, which I think was some sort of temperature probe, out of the inlet manifold because this is where our boost gauge is going to be reading from. So, it's in there pretty well. So we're going to be taking it out with vice grips. some sort of probe, temperature probe of some sort. There's no, you know, holes for it to be boost or anything like that. And it's just a resistance sender of some type. What I need to do, huh, it's the right thread, I think. So I've got this bottoming tap, which is a, uh, was it 1 8 NDP, I think? Yeah, 1 8 NDP. So, yep, cool, pretty sure it's the same. Love that. All right, so that's that done. So now we need to stick in the new, the new fitting, which is just a hose barb with an adapter. There's a BSP hose barb and a uh, NTP to BSP adapter. We need to fit that so that we can start getting our boost pressure reading from here. So, let's go and get our liquid sealant. same deal as the water you want to do 
nice bead of this all the way around. I'm not even going to attempt to get my finger in there. <laughs> Let that set, and then that is going to work lovely. So what we're going to do, we've got these two bungs, we don't really have a choice, we have to use these and we can't get them out. So this one has been filled up with weld um, when I was trying to weld the big nut on. It didn't work and the nut twisted off, I just wasn't getting enough basically fusion between this, this bung, whatever it's made out of, and the nut that I was welding. Um, so what the plan is, we're going to center pop this weld down the guts of it, we're going to drill it out and then we're going to get bigger and bigger until we're out to 8.5 mil and we're going to tap it to 3 point, uh, to um, 1 8 NP NPT. The reason we're going to do that is this thread is too big for the probe that we need to stick in here. So this is the probe that goes in, so it's quite small comparatively. Um, so we do need to have an adapter. We can't get this out, so we're going to make this into our adapter. Um, and the flip side is, if we were to do an adapter that raised it away from the manifold, it still wouldn't work because the probe needs to be in the exhaust flow. So doing it this way, we get the right depth and we get the adapter all in one go. Right, that's centered there. Little by little, piece by piece. We've still got a reasonable amount of um, steel on that bung too. Clear the whole thing. Yeah. Anchor all the way up. You don't want to play with any chips down there. This is a one-time shot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. There we go. Oh, looking good. I know. It's cutting beautiful, eh? Believe how easy that went. Go for this probe then. So, some sort of sealant or not some sort of sealant? How do we know? Well, those temperatures are going to kill most things, aren't they? All right. So we'll just we'll just wind it in. We got this stuff. What's the temp rating on there? I think that'll just melt. 200 C? Oh, no, 260 no. C? Not even close. 
Yeah, 260. It's going to be three times that. Okay, that's pretty tight. I don't know what the torque setting is. Just FT. Right, so that's got to be 90 degrees. All right. So we put you in there. Put you on that. What way do you go around? That meets to this. Must be that way around. Yep. Okay, so you can go on here. You go that way. Let's put you in. Put that on here. Alright, so now we need to look at... Oh. Can you see it? Yeah, I got it out about 10 mil. It's all we're going to get, so... So, do you want to just point it that way and then run your cabling straight across like that? This would be more ideal, so then we have things to work with, yeah. Alright, let's nip that up. It's already got a twist going on. It's it looks like it leaked there. And maybe it's corroded. I don't know which way was which, but maybe this is not the one that caused the damage. It's a copper gasket. It doesn't look like it's burned out or anything. But this could have been replaced though. I'm sure it was. And that probably went. These studs are seized. Done never coming out. There we go. Lovely. So these studs are horrific and before anybody flames me about them being terrible and they should have been replaced I literally can't get these out so the plan is basically to take this manifold off at some stage and pull these out because I'm not going to get them out in situ like it is however pulling this manifold off I'm pretty certain is going to open up a can of worms and I'm going to have exhaust studs that aren't going to come out and all that sort of jazz so what my plan will be is rather than try and pull this out and replace it with mild steel bolts and a cast iron manifold and all that sort of stuff I'm probably going to build a stainless uh, manifold, um, thick wall stainless, I'll potentially even water cool it, I'm not 100% sure on that yet, um, but yeah, that's down the track. For now, I'm just gonna put these back in knowing full well that I have dodgy uh, um, studs and I'm gonna have to deal with these in some way or shape or form. So, that said, always use copper cool. <laughs> you noisy bugger. Take seven. No, um, just go with. Yeah, I'm fine with, with it. So, when you go to put exhaust studs back together, always use copper coat because exhaust studs are meticulously designed to seize and break at inopportune moments, and these ones particularly so, given that they're garbage. So, plenty of this. Well, I call it copper coat. That's only a brand name. You can. It's anti seize, whatever it's called in your part of the world. Really doesn't matter. Just so long as it's something that's can handle high temp. Um, and is not going to dry on you. You want it to remain liquid so that in five years time you can undo your exhaust manifold. Right, it goes that way around. Get in there. One thing I do like to do 
when I'm putting up these sort of bolts onto a hot surface is I like to put a little bit of this stuff on the ceiling face just so that there's like no chance I'm going to have dry metal on metal So we're going to have to deal with the exhaust manifold. For now the turbo is just sitting back on there bolted on with two bolts. I've got the crossover pipe, alloy crossover pipe just sitting there with a couple of bolts in to keep things out of it. Um, what we'll press on with though is gauge wiring so we're going to carry on with our wiring to make sure that we can actually get this thing reading up at the bridge. So we've hooked the main power up. Uh, we have everything turned on but we're not getting lights to our gauges so we're just trying to do a bit of troubleshooting to figure out what's going on. So this is our cooling pipe for in the engine room um, and we've welded in this fitting, we've got a splatter I'll clean up and then I'll sandblast this whole thing up. This is the um, Red Arc sender, this is a temperature sender. So I still haven't replaced it but in the previous video my ear, ear gun snapped the end of it off. So what I'm going to do is utilise that. I'm going to jam this rag in as much as I can, which will allow me to then just... <laughs> All right, I need a stronger rag at the end. Okay, so we just need to basically jam this up. So we're going to ball this up and ram it down there. See if that's got enough um right. So this is just dishwashing liquid and a bit of water. Like a sieve. Okay, so what I'm looking for is bubbles. So there's a leak over there. Have a look at this. I'm gonna zoom in. There's one on either side. So what the plan is, we'll do a nick of grinding out of there and then we'll run a beetle weld around there again just to make sure that we um, seal that up perfectly. And this is the other side, now that I've ground it away you can see that there's a pinhole right in the middle there. So that's where our leaking was happening. And then back around this side, get the camera to focus. It doesn't show up as easy on this side but basically right in the, in the edge of that join uh, where I've ground it away, that's our other leak. So I don't want to kill this temperature sender with weld, so I'm just going to take this out. I'll reseal it back up by the time when you know when I go to do the pressure test again.
So I'm not putting thread tape or whatever in this because um, it's going to come out. It's a BSP fitting, so it's tapered. So as I tighten it, it jams up the thread more and more. It's going to leak out the top, but I'm not worried about that. I can check the bottom. That's all I really care about. Okay, so what we're looking for is bubbles where I put this new weld basically across here. Don't worry about bubbles up here. This will leak, and it really doesn't matter because that's getting changed out. But we want to make sure... Okay, so there's no pressure, so there should be no bubbles. I'll put a bit of pressure in. And you can see there's bubbles coming out the top of that bung, but there's nothing coming out the weld. So we know that we've got that hole. So we'll just go over now and we'll check the other side. So same deal, there's no pressure right now. Okay, I'll put a bit of pressure in. You can see it's coming out the top, but there's nothing coming out around the weld. So I know this is gonna hold pressure. All right, let's get this put, up, put back onto the engine. A bit of an old cork gasket that I made years ago actually. Um, then I was pressure testing these pipes, make sure that they were still okay. I slapped together some gaskets and I never had to take them off and consequently over the years they've gone pretty hard and dry. There was gasket seal on on both sides so it's basically half inch steel welded to the hull um, and it doesn't go through the hull so it um, it gives the um, cooler pipe something to bite onto. The pipe itself, um, you can sort of see it's a bit manky around here with the ground, but that basically is a weld where the pipe goes through the hull. And then they weld that pipe to the hull and weld the flange to the hull over here. And it gives them a really good seal, but it also means that these here don't go, don't penetrate through the hull at all. Um, so, yeah, just going to clean these out. If I've got a tap, I might even run a tap down those um, and we'll get this bolted back together. So there's a few different types of um, products we use today. So we've got like a copper coat or an anti-seize type stuff. We've got a pipe thread sealant. And we've also got um, uh, like a formed in place gasket sealant. So with those three, I actually had to cut the end off this one. It was a normal one that you put in a gun and squeeze it out. Um, but the, for some reason the end of it dried up. I didn't put it on tight enough or whatever it is. So I'm just gonna slice the end off. Um, most of this tube is still in here and then I'm going to goop that out. But that's one of the ways that we get these cork gaskets to work so well, is essentially giving it no chance to, um, to not bind up on the surface properly. So, let's get this open up. This stuff that I'm using is like an RTV um, type silicon. It's a high temp stuff. So, plenty of that all over the ceiling face. Now you want to be careful not to put too much. Um, you don't want to get it in the bolt holes. Because um, in this case the bolt holes are blind, so um, they don't go all the way through. So if you get too much liquid or whatever in those bolt holes, you can actually hydraulic the bolt and snap it off. So you've got to be a bit careful of that. I have got a little bit in, I'm just going to take that out before I seal it up. Okay, so we got that. Nicely spread around. Alright. Let's clean out of each of those holes. Layer one. So that's got our cork on there nice. Let's get the next layer on. Finally, this is our anti-seize stuff. So what we want to do 
again, because these are blind holes, you don't want to put ludicrous amounts of this stuff on because otherwise you'll risk hydraulicing the bolt. So just enough on the first few threads in this case, just to get it all down properly. Give my hand a bit of a wipe. Right. So you don't want to go down ludicrously tight on these. Just enough to squeeze that silicon evenly out all the way around, but not enough to like basically squeeze it out altogether. You still want a little bit in there. I like to, if you have the time, I like to basically nip them up, sort of just hand tight, let the stuff set. Um, I think this is a, Tack time 20 minutes, so skin time 10 minutes, tack time 20 minutes, and then 24 hours to go fully cured. Um, I like to let it get, like in this case, I'd probably try and leave this for a couple of hours, and then I'll come back and crank it up tight, just so that you can make sure that you're gonna get, um, you know, some remaining in there and it doesn't all squeeze out. Um, but I'm happy to start assembling the water system. I'm not gonna put water in it yet, but I'll start assembling all the parts and all the pipe work and everything like that and then come back in a couple of hours and we'll start um, tightening this up and I'll fill it up with water tomorrow. So this is the fitting that we welded in for our temperature sender. And the stuff we use is basically a, a high pressure pipe sealant. So I'll just throw a bit of this on. You want to put this on evenly all the way around. Like so. So we've got our red arc temp sender mounted in. I've uh, fastened these bolts up nice and tight, so that's nice and solid. Um, the wiring, you can see I've coiled it up, so I've got heaps of spare, and there's vibration room in case anything needs to move. It's zip tied to that main um, beam, so if I come around the back, you can sort of see this conduit basically zip tied up along there, and then that runs off over to the other side of the engine. So what I've got to do now, I've pulled this bung, which is a bung that goes into our water system, and you can hear that hose running. I've got to go through now and fill up Brewpeg's coolant system. The reason why I'm filling it up from this point here is uh, basically I can get more water into it faster. If I put it through the radiator cap, you've got tiny little fittings that it's got to go through, so it takes you 10 times longer. So I basically fill up about 70% of the water with this, and then once this is full, I swap over and use the uh, regular radiator cap just to get the last top part of the engine. So same deal, um, thread sealant rather than a tape, if you can. This old bung's got a bit of tape on but it's well above where it's going to be sealing so I'm not too stressed. Pull most of it off. Just to see 
So now that we've got the gauges fitted, let's do a bit of a walk through the whole system so you can see it from the bridge right down into the engine. Gauge harnesses go from each individual gauge through conduit down to this block of connectors at the back. That allows us to split each sender wire and send it down these main 18 conductor conduits. The power feed comes through this Blue Seas uh, 12 volt fuse box. If I just get rid of that, you can sort of see that's how the layout on these are set out. So you've got your earth panel up the top and then you've got your positive panel down the bottom here. Main positive feed coming in right at the bottom. From the back of the gauge box, those 18 conductor conduits run all the way down this cable tray. That cable tray, if I spin round, is attached to the roof. That's the back end of the steering wheel with the hydraulic pipes running down the back of the bulkhead. Those cables then run down behind the air conditioner all the way down. You can see them strapped to the wall there. That, uh, that cable tray basically works its way right down to the very bottom of the bulkhead. In the battery box under the wheelhouse floorboards it comes through the bulkhead from the kitchen, runs through more cable tray all the way around across the floor here and then loops down and you can see it going into the conduit. So inside that three inch stainless conduit, we've got um, our, at the moment we've got our AC run, we've also got our DC signal run. Uh, if we have any issues with regards to uh, signal interference, we'll be moving those two, separating them out. But for now, we're just gonna let them be and see how we go. So from the floor of the battery box, it goes through this three inch conduit stainless mandrel bent exhaust pipe all the way down and into the bulkhead that takes us through into the engine room. On the engine room side, it goes through the bulkhead and straight down to our stainless distribution box. From the distribution box, cables run through watertight cable glands, down cable tray with their zip tied up, and then under the floorboards, they run in a flexible conduit all the way to a large cable tray, which then takes the bulk of our electrical needs up to the gauge system that sits underneath the battery box. Underneath where the batteries are mounted, we've got our fuse system for down in the engine room. So again, we're using a Blue Seas fuse connector box. We have our hour gauge for the engine and all of our positives are taken and negatives actually are taken from this block here, which are feeding both the gauges upstairs in the wheelhouse and the gauges in the engine room. But to keep connections as watertight as possible for any of the sensor cables, this large grey 18 conductor cable here goes into an aluminium box that we made. You can sort of see we've got a few of our connections happening inside this box. We've also got our um, EGT sensor box. So this box takes a boost feed as well as the two cables in that green plug there that go to the uh, exhaust gas temp sender. So I'll show you where the senders on the engine run from here. So from this watertight and impact resistant box, that single black conduit comes out. The flexi conduit runs up the fuel line here, zip tied till it gets to the top of the engine and it splits out and goes three different directions. So the first is going to a boost, uh, basically a fitting that allows us to, to pull the boost pressure from the engine on the inlet manifold here. We've also got a second cable that runs over all the way to the exhaust manifold and you can see our exhaust temperature sender just sitting in the top of the manifold there. If I follow that back to the brake again, follow the conduit all the way around and you've got water temperature sender number one and I'll spin around the front of the motor and show you where the second sender So this is the opposite view of that water sender. So that's sender one, we've got our conduit, follows all the way down a water pipe, comes along to one of the two keel cooling pipes. So the cabling is zip tied to pipe one and then you can see we've fitted the sender into pipe two. The reason we've got two water senders is so that we can see what the temperature of the water is entering the engine and leaving the engine. So we know exactly how effective our keel cooling is uh, no matter where we are in the world, whether it's polar or tropical. 
So now that we've got everything fitted, all of our sensors, our cabling runs, the whole lot's done. Let me show you these gauges in operation. As a final note, if you're keen to check out the Red Arc gauges that we used on Brewpeg, there's a link in the description below. Check it out. Thanks guys. You want to leave